What's up, YouTube world? This is your brother, Reza, part wrenching in the parking deck. Sometimes I end up wrenching in random places. Today, I'm in this, on this beautiful weekend day. I'm out here in my friend's neighborhood, wrenching in the neighborhood today, but I'm still in the driveway, so it's kind of wrenching in the parking deck. And I'm working on this, I think this is a 1995 Defender 90. Also a good friend of mine and he's been having some cooling systems issues with it so I'm gonna see if I can help him remedy his cooling systems issues he thinks that he has a blown head gasket but I think his fan clutch might be bad and uh, we're gonna try to troubleshoot that a little bit so if you want to come in here I can kind of show you how the system works to some degree now I'm not a Land Rover expert I spent most of my time working on Mercedes and Toyotas but a car is a car and an engine is an engine so basically the cooling system in this car is like like this you have the radiator right here you have your fan right here this fan is connected directly to the uh the shaft of the uh, motor with the fan clutch the fan clutch basically determines the amount of uh, cfms that the fan pulls through the uh, front of the car to cool the um well, the front of the vehicle to cool the uh the coolant keep the engine at optimal temperature and I, if your fan clutch stops working and it doesn't pull enough uh, enough airflow through the radiator your truck is going to overheat I think that might be the issue with this I'm not hundred percent sure but we're gonna do a small little diagnosis and test basically right now his coolant system is almost dry he needs to put a little bit of oil in here because he doesn't really maintain his truck that well Just don't tell him I said that and um, yeah we're gonna top off his oil we're gonna top off his coolant and we're gonna see where we are so that's pretty much what we're going to show you how to do today. So the first thing you need to do to actually add coolant to this is take this annoying little cap off right here. I don't know if this is like standard Land Rover stuff and I probably shouldn't be doing this with a vice grip but my friend really wants me to do this and I don't even have my tools with me. So sometimes you got to improvise and previous people have taken this off. You can already see all the um, marks and stuff on it from people messing with it and taking it off with whatever they could probably find and i imagine myself like if i was on safari in this truck and i had to put coolant in it this is like the worst way to do it like why would they not just put a normal like radiator cap of some sort so you can feel the radiator like this is so 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 annoying but that's the way land rover built it so gotta go with what they do but you can probably put an aftermarket radiator on this car so you don't have to do all this, but um, this is what we have to deal with. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to open this and I'm going to open this one right here. And I'm going to fill in water from the highest point, which I believe is, well, actually I can probably fill it from here or there. And that will get all the air out of the system and ensure that the uh, cooling system is filled thoroughly. I don't think we have any actual coolant to put in it right now. But it's not winter time, so we don't have to worry about freeze over. Now, boil over, that's a different issue without having coolant. But he kind of wants to just see is it going to leak and that kind of stuff like that. So this is more so of just a test to see what's going on. And there is a drain plug at the bottom of this radiator. But as you can see, I'm not dressed appropriately to be wrenching on the car today. This is kind of one of those um, scenarios that just popped up and happened. Now... You might be wondering, why is he still turning that knob? It's because this thing is like ridiculously tight in here for no reason. And I'm sure there's a special tool for this. And I'm sure like Land Rover guys are going to look at this video and be like, oh my God, I can't believe he's doing that right now. Uh, here's the O-ring. But this is basically the plug for the top of the radiator. That's what it looks like. It has a little slot and it has, uh, it's basically like a little socket uh, match. And I'm sure it's a proprietary tool that Land Rover will sell you for a pretty penny. So we're going to open that up and I'm going to open this one up and I'm going to fill the system up and we're going to see if it leaks or anything like that. We're going to see if it runs hot. We should probably go get some coolant though. So I'm going to talk to my friend and see if he wants to go do that if we have enough time. And um, yeah, we're going to go from there. So now I'm going to open this one.
Today's episode is brought to you by Adidas. <laughs> when you wrench, wrench with Adidas on your feet, not on your hands. So what I was going to say was that the way they designed these trucks, they were supposed to be built for simplicity and endurance and being in harsh, austere environments. I could not imagine myself being on safari in Kenya or something like that or Mozambique or whatever, stranded in the middle of nowhere in the forest and having to wrench on this thing. I mean, maybe if you grow up with this type of car, <laughs> it'll be an easy thing to fix. But me not growing up with a Land Rover, it's just like everything is like, why did they build it like that? It's not easy to fix. Be right back. <laughs> okay, so when we left off, I was going to fill this uh, the cooling system. What year is your Land Rover, son? 94. On this, oh, what did I say it was earlier? I can't remember what I said it was. Anyway, when we left off, um, I was going to fill the coolant system on this 94 Land Rover Defender 90. What happened was, we realized number one, we didn't have any coolant, two, we didn't have a funnel, and three, we also need to put oil in this car. So basically what we're trying to do in this video is diagnose this fan clutch and figure out if this fan clutch is working or if it's not working. To do that, right now the coolant system is low, so we're gonna fill the coolant system back up to capacity, we're gonna fill the oil up, and then we're gonna turn the car on we're going to let it come up to operating temperature, and then we're going to check the fan clutch, see if the fan clutch engages, and if we hear an audible difference in the sound of the fan, and we're going to see if the fan becomes tight. If the fan does not become tight, the fan clutch isn't working because it's not pulling more uh, CFMs of air through the radiator. And basically, the way this works is when you turn your vehicle on, your fan is loose to save horsepower, but as you increase uh, in heat, fan tightens up so it spins faster so it increases the airflow. And that's just the basic operation of this type of uh, fan clutch. If it was me, I would put electric fans on this car. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Can we do that? It's, it's doable. <laughs> so, I have two jugs of coolant and a jug of oil and I'm going to go ahead and start filling up the uh, coolant system. Here we go. By the way, today's episode is brought to you by Hoopa Boys. When you want to smoke like a king, you gotta smoke a Hoopa Boys hookah. The Hoopa King right here. So, we filled the cooling system back up and water came out through here. So we know that, you know, for the most part, water is throughout the entire cooling system right now. So, now, we're gonna go ahead and cap this back up. And we're gonna fill it up with oil, and then we're gonna go ahead and crank it up and see what she does. Put water in, put coolant in. Oil level's high. Where it needs to be. She's not gonna jump. Now we just gotta jump it. As we jump it, we're gonna let it run to operating temperature, and we're gonna see what this fan does. See if we hear a change in the uh, fan speed, or not, yeah, the fan speed, or but then we're gonna shut it down and see if we feel uh, any tightness or grippiness in the clutch. If we don't feel any grippiness in the clutch, the fan clutch, then we know that the fan clutch is bad. Yeah, that might help. Number number one, number ten today. Hey, it came alive that time. All right. Now we're gonna let it run and get it to operating temperature. Now we're gonna see the fan push it up. Now. 
you when you rev it like that, especially if the clutch is engaged, it'll get really loud. Like you can really hear a very different uh, sound coming from the fan. So I think this vehicle might need a fan clutch replaced. But if you guys out there, oh, watch out, look on. But if you guys out there in YouTube world know anything about Defenders and Defender fan clutches in particular, just hit me right here in the comments. Subscribe, you know what I'm saying, so you can see all my other videos. Hit me right here in the comments and let me know, you know. What's up, man? I think it might be bad. That's why I was telling people out there on YouTube, if they work on 90s or know anything about Land Rover 90s, let me know if you think the fan clutch on this uh, Defender 90 is bad. Once again, this was 94? 94. Yeah. 1994 D90 fan clutch. Taking the window off. So YouTuber Doug DeMero did a review of the Defender 90. I think he actually owns one that's yellow. This one right here actually used to be yellow. Used to be yellow. And then my boy modified it as you can see. He has massive lip kit, exhaust, this beautiful orange paint with black accents. The sound system? Oh my god, look at the sound system. It's one, two, three, four. Four so four fifteens. And four six by nines. Four six four fifteen? Four fifteens. Four fifteens, four six by nines door speakers this thing when it comes to sound this thing is bananas so what do i personally think about the fitter 90s i think the fitter 90s are just like jeep wranglers they come with the lifestyle if you're going to drive a car like this on a daily basis you have to be one of those people that's very comfortable with being uncomfortable you have to be comfortable with getting a little bit wet when it rains you have to be comfortable with some of the smells the engine may produce and the ride quality of this type of vehicle it's okay. google boys all that Google boys holla at us. It's yeah. But you gotta be comfortable with every aspect that comes with owning a vehicle like this. Are they nice? Yes. Are they beautiful? Yes. Are they great to look at? Yes. But it's not like driving in a Lexus or a Mercedes and you're, you know, you're comfortable and everything is like quiet and serene. This is the exact opposite experience. Alright. So, we're about to go for a ride. This is 94 Defender 90. What do you made this truck? Hi, girl. We're going to go for a ride in the Tiger, and we'll be right back. Ride in the 94 Defender 90, also known as the Tiger, the Hookah Boys Tiger, I should say. Let me be very specific about that. The Hookah Boys Tiger, and uh, everything seems to be good so far. The temperature is holding dead center. We drove about three or four miles, and everything's been good. So I guess he's going to drive it and see what happens and watch the temperature. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to watch the cooling again. But if anybody out there knows anything about the uh, fan clutches on a 1994 Defender 90, just leave a comment right below and. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to our channel. So, the Defender 90, why is it so special? Why is it called Defender 90? I don't really know that much about these vehicles. I'm not gonna front like I do. But I went on Wikipedia and I read a couple of things about it. This vehicle was made from approximately, in this format, was made from approximately 1980s till I think 2015. And prior to that, they had other Defenders, but I don't think they called them Defenders. I think they might've been called Defenders, but they weren't 90s. It was something else in a different format. This specific one was made for a long time, and it pretty much was made the same way that entire lifespan. In the United States, these vehicles demand a very high price. I mean, you'll be lucky to find one for less than 50, 60K these days. Um, what else can I say? It has a V8 engine in it. The V8 motor puts out, I think, about like 250, 300 horsepower roughly. That's probably a little bit of an exaggeration between you and me. Um, it's called a Defender 90 because of the wheelbase. Good lord. <laughs> anyway, it's called a Defender 90 because of the wheelbase. This one is a 90 because it's a two-door short wheelbase. You also have the uh, 110, I believe it is. Yeah, I think it's the 110 or the 120, something like that. Don't quote me. Don't judge. <laughs> 110 or the 120 and that's the longer four-wheel drive version of this that is a little bit rare in the United States you see a couple of them here and there but it's more common to see a 90 in this country both of these the 90 or the 110 or one hey is that a 110 or a 120 
oh wow okay so there's a 110 a 120 and a 115 but those are all the different lengths of the body of the vehicle this was an off-road four-wheel drive um safari vehicle slash just pretty much overland vehicle that land rover developed for many years for many different purposes it was used for the military it was used for civilian uh applications it's been used for exploration it's been used to climb mountains this vehicle has been used to do a lot of things for many years. It's a great truck. It's an iconic truck. It is a very, to me, it's a very important vehicle in the history of the vehicle. So that's today's video with the 1994 Defender 90 Land Rover. This vehicle is fun to drive. It's fun to look at. And with this one in particular, it's fun to listen to. If you see me out in the streets, wrenching in your parking deck, holla at your boy. No, no, bro. I had to look at it. I don't really know so much about the new shit. Thank you so much. Alright, let's see if it cranks up. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she's like, I'm not doing Child. that on camera. Oh, it just cranked up and now it won't crank up on camera. That's so funny. <laughs>